Daichi wakes up with a bad hangover and finds himself lying by his house's open door. To his shock, his house is in the middle of a freaking forest, and there are dragons overhead. It doesn't take long for him to realize that he has woken up in another world. Did he die or something? Well, he does remember going out with his colleagues after work, but it was really boring. He drank some, then when he got home, he passed out. Oh well, he's here now, his head hurts and he needs more sleep. But then, the pounding in his poor head worsens as he hears some loud awe noises outside. It's a bunch of girls, dressed like witches, talking about how there's so much power in the area and how they won't be able to defeat it, whatever that is. Daichi wonders if they're a bunch of cosplayers, but one of the girls there, who they call Princess, suddenly charges at him. Yeah, nope, Daichi ain't having it. He still needs his sleep, and so the man decides to do something about this. With all his might, he takes a deep breath before yelling at them to shut up. Don't they know how early it is? Shockingly, though, his voice is enough to send that princess flying backwards, which perturbs the other girls. He's a monster. Daichi starts walking towards the witches like he's Joe Taro about to tear Dio a new one. They warn the princess to get back as she stands up, but when she tries to take a step, her legs start shaking, and she suddenly wets herself. The princess apologizes to Daichi, saying they didn't mean to disturb him, so he explains that he only wanted to scare them away and doesn't even know how he did what he did. Daichi then grabs the princess's witch hat and asks where they are. Teary-eyed, the witch tells him that his house is in the middle of the most powerful magic spot. Because of that, Daichi is also very powerful. Just look at his shout. He continues to ask what she means about magic, but one of the other witches calls out to her. And so, the princess, still grabbing her wet skirt, flings her wand for an emergency teleport and disappears with her team. Finally, it sinks in for Daichi that he's truly in another world. This is exciting. However, he'll have to learn how to live. What's different here? How can he learn survival skills? With those thoughts in mind, he rushes back to his house to check if his food, clothes, and other stuff are still there. Thankfully, they are. Even his single bed is still there, too. He's not surprised that hasn't changed. It has been that way for 10 years. Anyway, it's time to catch some Zs. This house has been his family home for 60 years. It's where he feels the most secure. Finally, he can get more sleep. Or can he? Loud noises jolt him out of bed again. Outside, the poor, teary-eyed witches are back and getting chased by a huge dragon. Their emergency teleport earlier apparently put them in a dragon's nest. The witches call out to their princess and say they'll distract the dragon so she can escape. But with Daichi's house in front of them and a dragon behind, where can she run to? Besides, as a royal family member, she can't forsake her own people. She believes she's supposed to lead them into battle and not run away. And so they try to fight the dragon head on, but it starts using fire breath. While the girls are literally fighting for their life, Daichi's just covering his ears, trying to get some shut eye without a dam to give that world. His headache is killing him, but with the fight intensifying, Daichi's eyes start screaming bloody murder. He slides his doors open, fuming, and with his get off my damn lawn energy in full swing, the man bellows out, I've told you to let me sleep. His shout creates a tornado that sends the dragon and the witches flying. The poor, poor girls fall to the ground, their clothes ripped and body aching. Again, Daichi's shocked at what he did, and he comes running towards them, asking if they're okay. The girls grow even more unsettled as they're completely overtaken by his immense power. Shortly after, they all start weeing themselves. The princess cries, thinking that she needs to stop. And I agree, golden shower? More like go get a shower. As for Daichi, he's just stumped that they're weeing all over his garden. The crying princess begs Daichi to spare her people. She tells him to take her life if he must, but our guy wants none of that. What he does want, though, is for them to take that big dragon out of his garden. This surprises the witches. That huge creature can't normally be defeated without a party of at least 10 skilled adventurers. Its scales alone can be sold for a fortune, and its heart is more valuable than any jewel due to its magic properties. So why would Daichi want them to take such a treasure? Daichi doesn't care about all that, though. He tells them that they can do whatever they want with the dragon as long as they stay away from his area because he only wants to get some sleep. His hangover and huge headache are his worst enemies right now. Not sensing ulterior motives from his words, the princess agrees and uses magic to make the dragon float. She introduces herself as Dionea Prussia Medicine, Prussia Country's second princess, and promises that she will repay the debt before leaving. With the Wee Wee Witches finally gone, Daichi can now sleep in peace. A little while later, he wakes up to someone calling him Sir. 
He touches his oh-so-comfy pillow and wonders what feeling it must be until the voice interrupts and says she has prepared lunch for him. When Daichi opens his eyes, he realizes his face is in front of a girl's lap. Flustered, he thinks he might have forgotten to lock the door earlier, but the girl counters it, saying the door was locked and closed. She adds that the door will not open for anybody but him, her sir. Confused, he asks who the girl is. She introduces herself as Sakura, the spirit of the house. Sakura explains she was initially embarrassed to meet him, so she's been hiding. But now she's finally able to face him, to meet the family that's been taking care of her for decades since her birth. Daichi asks how she got her name, but before the girl can answer, he remembers that the main pillar of the house is made from a cherry blossom tree. Sakura is elated that he still remembers that, and the man explains his grandfather told him about it when he was younger. And so, new proof that he's in another world arrives. It's fascinating how his house has become such a cute girl. To add to that, she's taking care of him too. Sakura blushes thanking him for calling her cute. She then shows him the food she prepared from his fridge. Oh boy, it's a home-cooked meal. A guy like him probably hasn't had one in ages. Still, he's curious if it's still cold. Sakura explains that she's able to use magic to generate electricity. She also tapped into the groundwater so the faucet should work. The man is amazed at how magic can do all those things and eats the meal she prepared before it gets cold. After enjoying the food, he asks how they were summoned to another world. The spirit explains that he and his house have been in a magic spot for so long, they've absorbed a lot of magic. Daichi recalls Dianea also mentioned the magic spot, so Sakura continues saying the witch's understanding is too superficial. More accurately, the magic spot is called a dragon vein. It's a location that has gathered a lot of magic, and the same power exists in both her and Daichi. He has lived in the dragon vein since his birth, so he's filled to the brim with magic power. Daichi thinks this makes sense, especially after seeing that tornado he unintentionally created earlier. However, Sakura says that's only a fraction of what he can do and that he should practice using magic. With that, he looks up at the ceiling and says they need to go outside. If he's gonna practice, he wouldn't want to damage his house aka Sakura when he fails to control it. This makes the spirit smile, and she thanks him for thinking of her. After changing his clothes, the two go out and see the wreck in his garden. Daichi gets annoyed looking at the mess and remembering what the witches caused, but Sakura interrupts his thoughts and asks what he wants to practice first. Despite wanting to fix the wasteland before them, he thinks it will be good if they can make stuff they can eat. So the spirit creates an apple using her magic, saying they can use it to obtain food. They can make an orchard with the seeds of that one apple. It'll also make the wasteland green, so that'd be hitting two birds with one stone. Daichi knows it won't be that easy. Trees take time to grow, after all. However, Sakura says it's okay since they can use magic. Since it's his first time officially using his power, she offers to help him. Sakura is in tune with his magic, so she tells him to use her as he sees fit. Use her? Yup. The spirit asks him to touch her body and imagine the tree growing. No way. Touch her? Where? Her chest? Okay, Daichi, get your head out of the gutter. Sakura's head should work fine. As soon as he pats the girl's head, her face contorts into a sensual look. She lets out a little croon, making Daichi take his hand off. She opens her eyes and tells him to imagine the tree growing and that she'll adjust his power. Flustered, he tries to focus on what he actually needs to do. To grow a tree, it first has to sprout. The seed must grow. Sakura continues squirming under his hold. She can see the image he's sending and feel his overwhelming magic going through her body. Soon enough, they successfully make the sprout appear. Daichi gets excited seeing the little plant. It only took a few seconds, so he thinks he can do the entire tree at once if it's that easy. He doesn't need to do each step separately. Sakura, who looks beat and is feeling really warm, slowly agrees. He asks if she's tired, but she says she was just surprised by his magic. After checking on her, Daichi continues, holding onto her head again. Sakura pants as he uses his magic. She thinks it's amazing how he's capable of releasing power that's more than necessary. Moments later, she finally reaches her high and croons loudly as the huge apple tree grows instantly. Daichi watches in amazement as the tree appears before him. He later notices the wasted spirit behind him and asks if she's okay. She didn't expect to feel that overwhelming power from him, but yeah, she's fine. Happy that he's already got the hang of magic, she hands him an apple, the fruit of his labor, food created with his own power. But Daichi says it was made by both of them, making her blush. The man takes a bite of the fruit and is fascinated by how fresh and sweet it is. So this is how to use magic, huh? Sakura praises him and says they're ready to turn this place into an orchard. 
However, before they can start planting more trees, a dragon arrives and grabs Sakura. Meanwhile, Dianaya is in the forest again, carrying a heavy bag of coins. They sold the dragon for over 3,000 silver, so she wants to deliver the money to the man who defeated it. She doesn't want her people to go to a dangerous place, aka Daichi's house, so she's going there herself. The witch princess is still low on magic after the earlier events, so she can't make the bag float and has to drag it with her instead. Suddenly, she sees a dragon flying in the sky. The rainbow-colored scales and small body make her recognize it's a great dragon, one with magic resistance and high dexterity, making it superior to a regular dragon. She wonders why a strong creature rarely seen by human eyes is attracted to the magic spot. Well, it's to take the powerful house, apparently. Daichi watches as it takes Sakura away. If a dragon steals his house, he's a failure as a homeowner. He needs to save her, fast, and so he uses his magic and holds onto the apple tree he has just created. Since the dragon has Sakura, he needs to have pinpoint accuracy not to hit her. Despite worrying that he might not be able to use his magic without the spirit, he successfully makes the tree extend and hit the creature. The dragon loses one of its grips on Sakura, but it still isn't enough. He hits it again until it finally lets go of the girl. He runs to catch her and luckily grabs her in his arms, perfectly grabbing her knockers too. Sorry, Sakura, it was an accident. He was just trying to catch you. The spirit thanks him, and they deal with the dragon. Daichi has already beaten it, but the persistent fellow comes back. Sakura says it must be trying to make the magic spot its new nest. Suddenly, Daichi's stomach growls. He's hungry in a situation like this? Sakura thinks he used a lot of magic growing apples, that's why. She then blurts out that according to the information she has gathered, dragon meat seems delicious. Um, uh, what? She even said it with such a cute face. Anyway, Daichi considers her words. He asks if the dragon's not poisonous, even if it has a weird color, and Sakura nods. It's a lot to eat for just the two of them, but it charged at them first, so it can't be helped. He declares he will eat the dragon and plans how to take it down. Now that Sakura's not up there, he doesn't need to be as careful as before, so just a shout should do it. He yells, I want to eat meat, and the tornado of his voice hits the creature. It's close, but still isn't enough since the dragon is too far. It starts flying further away, and Daichi worries how troublesome it'll be if it attacks other people, but it would be hard for him to put it down at that distance. However, Sakura calls out to him and reminds him that his mental image is important. He can't just shout, he needs to focus his magic, and so he tries again. With a blaring shout, he lets out a powerful explosion that makes the dragon fall. Unknowingly, he also sends Dianea flying away again. Is this going to happen every time she walks over here? Poor princess. The dragon hunt is complete. Daichi proudly looks at his work and asks what they will do with it. Sakura enthusiastically says to leave it to her knowledge of butchering a dragon. Her magic makes it easy enough. She's a reliable home. Later, she presents a firm yet melt-in-your-mouth rainbow dragon steak to her master. Daichi enjoys the meal and says he can eat it every day. Well, no worries. Sakura also prepared a magic-powered cold storage underground near their apple orchard, so he can surely have more of that meat. He praises her for being able to do anything, but his humble home says it's not true. He's the one who saved her today, after all. Meanwhile, Dianea finally gains consciousness and realizes Daichi's magic put her down again. She decides to leave and come back later, but our girl is just as clumsy as ever. Days later, Daichi and Sakura continue making their orchard. Their apple farming is going well, and he's getting the hang of it. So, Sakura suggests that it's time for his next lesson. The provocative pose catches Daichi off guard again, especially when she tells him to touch her and give her his magic. He positions himself behind her and grabs her shoulder to start, and when she reaches her high, a weird creature appears before them. It's a wood golem, and it'll do what Daichi tells it to. It'll be perfect for picking apples. While the man is still fascinated by what magic can do, Sakura senses something from far away. She suddenly turns to Daichi, and with a lecherous look, says she needs to become one with him. Of course, indecent thoughts are rushing to his head again. As a house, he has been with her for so long, but it's only been a few days since he started seeing her in a spirit form, so he's worried about becoming one. However, he eventually agrees. Sakura makes him close his eyes, and they put their heads against each other. Daichi panics at how close they are. He can hear everything, from her breathing to her heart beating. It's as if the boundary between them has vanished. He can feel how warm he is, and they both ooh and ah at the addicting sensation they're experiencing. Suddenly, a virtual map appears above them, surprising him. The girl explains it's a bird's eye view of the house. 
This is why Sakura synchronized with him, so he can see the things she sees. It finally sinks in him why they had to become one. Daichi had a very different idea of what was supposed to happen, but he's glad to understand her purpose now. He didn't know the house spirit could do that. Sakura then informs him that she's currently tracking 65 monsters that are trying to break into their premises. She asked him to do that synchronization the moment she noticed their presence. Galu Garu, who rules over the forest where Daichi's house is, plans to take over his place. He thinks it'll be a perfect home for their wolf clan standing at the top of the forest. All units are in place, and the wolves are prepared to fight like how they did in the last city they destroyed. With so much eagerness to have a feast after victory, the leader commands them to charge in. However, they're in for an unexpected battle. Galu proudly declares that their elite strike teams will quickly dispatch the enemy. He believes that with telepathic communication, their teamwork is flawless. Their enemy might as well self-destruct. Mm -hmm. Be careful with your words, Wolf. Meanwhile, Daichi watches them move closer. He worries that it might be impossible to fight them off since there are too many of them. Sakura calls his attention and asks him to use her again. Since they're in sync, she can create traps for them if he puts his magic in her. Amazed at what they can do together, he puts his head against her and says he's counting on her. The wolves get startled when one of the trees starts moving. Daichi used his and Sakura's magic to make the golems rise. Six gigantic wood golems block each unit of the wolves and the fierce beasts suddenly look terrified. Galu asks what the tree has become, and someone says it's a golem made with magic. However, the creature continues to grow before them, so he yells at the other wolf. Most golems are only human-sized, so it would take so much magic to get that big. He thinks it must be an illusion because there's no way their enemy has that much power. But reality settles in him when the other units telepathize that they need help with a huge golem, too. They walked right into the enemy's trap, and now they can't do anything. This is Daichi's territory, and he will not allow intruders in. The man finishes the fight by commanding the golems to get rid of them. The wolves fly in the air as the wood creatures kick them away. After winning against the wolves, Sakura giddily turns to him and praises how well he can control the golems. It's wonderful how they became perfect traps for this battle. Just then, Daichi's stomach growls loudly. Understandably, he's hungry as he used a lot of magic for that fight. The house spirit knows he hasn't eaten since that morning, so she happily says it's time for her to make lunch. Daichi thanks her. It's great to have his house spirit. When the golems appeared, cities nearby went into a panic. Who would have thought such a powerful being existed in that magic spot? Well, Daichi didn't expect any of this either. He only wanted to sleep after a night of drinking, yet he woke up in the middle of another world. Despite his life's unusual turns, it's obvious he's enjoying it now. With the help of Sakura, he continues to learn how to wield his magic and protect the house he has always felt safe in. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.